The lengths of steel tubing that we know as casing perform several vital functions in a well. For example, a casing string stabilizes the wall of the hole and keeps it from caving in. What's more, a string of casing correctly cemented in the hole keeps formation fluids from migrating from one zone to another. Preventing fluid migration protects upper zones from contamination and eliminates underground blowouts. So, casing is important. Let's find out more about it. In this program, we'll look at getting casing onto the rig. Stacking, measuring, cleaning casing, and running casing. Let's begin on shore at the casing yard, where personnel prepare casing before it goes out to the rig. One thing they do is check every joint for defects. Here they're using high-tech equipment to look for cracks and other flaws. This machine uses radiation to sort of x-ray a joint. Defects show up as spikes on a strip chart as well as on a display screen. Other checks include Magnaflux testing which reveals flaws using fluorescent material and a black light. Cracks will glow brightly under the light. This joint looks like it's okay in fact, by the time personnel in the casing yard finish their work, you can be pretty sure that the casing joints that arrive in your rig area are in good shape. Let's see what you can do to keep it that way. A work boat brings casing to the rig. Crew members rig casing joints up to the rig's crane. The rig crane hoists the casing from the boat to the rig. During lifts, attach a tagline to each end of the load. Taglines help you guide the casing safely to the deck. Make sure the taglines are in good shape. Chances are you'll be unloading a lot of casing and by the time you finish, you could wear out the tag lines. Replace them as needed. You can keep the lines from fraying by taping the ends. An important point. When bringing casing on board, stand clear of the load. Always work the casing from the ends and off to one side. And don't let anyone walk under a load. If a sling should happen to break, someone could be badly hurt. One crew member should be appointed signal man or banksman during the operation. The single man makes sure that the positive locking pipe hooks and slings are securely in place. This person also makes sure that the load is not attached to the deck and is ready to lift. During the lift the signal man also checks to be sure that nothing is in the way of the load. To avoid confusion, the signal man should be the only person signaling the crane operator. Now let's look at stacking, measuring, and cleaning casing. As you know, a casing joint has a pin end and a coupling in. When the joints come onto the rig, stack them with the pin ends pointing away from the drill floor. This way, you don't have to turn the joints around before pulling them up onto the drill floor. Be aware of where you put your hands. If you put your hands in between the joints and a sudden swell makes them shift, you could lose your hand. Next, measure the length of each joint. Add it up. The lengths tell the driller exactly how deep the casing is as the joints are run. Also, you need to know the length when spacing out the wellhead. 
Measure where the threads stop on the pin end. To the end of the collar at the other end. Measure the length to the nearest hundredth of an inch. For instance, this joint is 40.34 feet long. It helps to have a person in the middle of the joints to keep the measuring tape from getting stuck between the casing. It can be hard to get it loose if the tape gets caught. Number all the joints and it helps to paint the length on there too. If the joint has to be set aside for any reason, it's easy to keep track of its length if it's on the joint. Also, write down the joint number and its length on the casing tally sheet. After you've measured the first row, stack the second row on top. Use wooden spacers. Spacers protect the lower row of joints and make it easier to roll the casing on and off the stack. You may or may not have to check the inside diameter of the casing to ensure that it is not dented. If you do, we videotape yard personnel to show you how. This ID check is known as rabbiting or drifting. A rabbit or drift that's the right size for the casing goes inside it. Put the rabbit in the casing and pull it through with the line. If it goes through easily, then the casing is not dented. If it gets stuck, use a stick to push the drift out and reject the joint. Here, red stripes and no drift indicate the bad joint. A stuck drift or rabbit means the joint's no good because it probably won't let the bit pass through or hold under pressure. Never do this. Using compressed air to push the rabbit through the casing is asking for trouble. It's dangerous because the force of the air could cause the rabbit to travel uncontrolled through the joint and injure someone when it comes out. Also check the casing for cracks, bad scars, or other damage. The company supplying the casing has already checked each joint, but it's a good idea to give it another quick inspection. It may have been damaged during transit to the rig. If you find a joint that's cracked, has minor dents, or is badly scarred, mark it and let the driller or tool pusher know. A crew uses a lot of equipment to make a casing job run smoothly. An important tool is the tongs. Both manual and power tongs are available. Thoroughly check both types before you use them. Make sure the jaws are the right size for the casing. And on power tongs, check the hydraulic lines for proper operation. When using tongs, always position them with the handles. You can injure your hands if you maneuver tongs without using the handles. Check the snub lines holding the tongs. Lines need to be in good condition and of the correct length. Make sure the snub lines are attached to a suitable anchor point and are securely fixed to the point. Always use lines with factory made eyes. Check your torque gauge and torque sensors. They must be working correctly to get the right torque when making up the casing. Also make sure the hoisting line used to lift casing to the rig floor is in good shape. The rope used in the V-door is another thing that gets a lot of wear when running casing, so check it for damage from time to time. On most rigs, you can't run casing without a stabbing board, so make sure it's in good order. Adjust it to the length of casing you'll be running. Also, check the emergency stop. It must work correctly. If it doesn't, serious injury can result. The stabbing board has two independent locking devices. One is the primary locking device. It keeps the stabbing board from moving when the lifting mechanism is not operating. The secondary locking device keeps the board from moving if the hoisting mechanism fails. Test these safety devices before each casing job. Get the cementing head ready before running the casing. Check its operation and load the bottom and top plugs into it.
Then, raise it to the rig floor where it'll be ready to use. Here's the mud fill-up line. While running casing, you have to periodically fill the casing with mud. If you don't, the hydrostatic pressure of mud in the hole could collapse the casing. Filling the casing offsets downhole hydrostatic pressure. Use the fill-up line to put mud into the casing. This mud fill-up arrangement also allows you to circulate mud through the casing. Circulation can help get the casing through tight spots. Another thing to check, make sure your hard hat fits securely. Don't lose your hard hat because it's too loose. If you have a chin strap, use it. Your hard hat could fall into the casing. If it does, everything comes to a stop until it's fished out. It's an unnecessary delay and probably happens more than you think. Lift the casing up to the drill floor. Pick it up with the crane and place a joint or two on the catwalk. Next, attach a sling from the tugger line to the collar end. Then, pull up the joint to the V-door. Notice the wet pipe ramp. It helps the joints slide easily. In this pre-job meeting, the supervisor assigns each crew member a specific task. Be sure you stick to your role until the job is finished. Not changing the job you're assigned to makes the job go smoothly and reduces the chances of an accident. This casing shoe goes on the first joint of casing to go in the hole. The threads on the shoe are clean and ready to be made up. Also apply thread locking compound, sometimes called Baker Lock, to the first couple of joints that you make up. Locking compound keeps the shoe and the joints from being backed out when drilling out the casing shoe. What can happen is the bit cutters bite into the shoe's concrete. Then instead of drilling it out, the cutters jam up. The rotating and jammed up bit then unscrews the shoe and the joints above it. So always apply locking compound to the shoe, float collar, and the first couple of joints. Pick up the joint from the V-door with the tugger line. Once the joint clears the ramp, catch the bottom end with the rope and tail it into the rotary table. The person handling the rope at the V-door needs to be alert. Missing a joint would have very serious consequences. As the joint clears the ramp, remove the thread protector. Put it in a nearby receptacle. Don't be tempted to save time by throwing them. Now the floor crew stabs the casing. Next, the derrick man steadies the top of the casing while it's being made up. Once it's made up to the correct torque, the casing elevators are attached. Then the power slips are activated to release the casing and the driller lowers it into the hole. Usually, you fill every joint of casing with mud. We say usually because how often you fill depends on downhole pressure. As mentioned earlier, downhole hydrostatic pressure can collapse empty casing. You repeat these steps until all the casing is made up and full of mud. Then you're ready to cement the casing into place. And once the cement sets, you're ready to begin drilling again. Running casing is a vital part of the drilling operation. Taking shortcuts will just stop things from running smoothly. So, as in everything else you do, pay close attention to safety. Make sure all of your equipment is working properly and that you are using it correctly.